Hello YouTube, it's Lion here with Hobbies and Man once again, and today we're going to be talking about uh, Moon Knight Episode 3. So, uh, Moon Knight Episode 3 kind of continues the story right where it left off last time in Egypt, uh, and it kind of goes into this new kind of phase of the show where instead of just focusing on, you know, Arthur Harrow being chased by uh, my boy Stephen Grant slash Mark Spector slash Jake Crowley, I think is the third personality. Um, but he hasn't shown up in the show yet. Uh, it kind of focuses more on Khonshu dealing with, you know, the gods. Because uh, he basically decides, you know what, we haven't been able to do anything. We need to get um, the help from other gods, right? So he does this thing where he basically causes an eclipse. And then uh, all the other gods join uh, this kind of consortium thing I, or, or like this like panel they like all show up and then they walk through this portal very kind of Diagon Alley-esque um, and they end up inside the Pyramid of Giza where they happen to have this chamber where they're all sitting down and we get to meet this um, other goddess and um, and avatar duo which was Yatsil I think was her name and she was the um the Avatar of Hathor, which is pretty interesting. Um, I, I quite like that. I, I'm kind of a big fan of Stargate. And if I remember correctly, Hathor was probably one of the more interesting uh, Goa Wuld characters in that show. Uh, because if you guys don't know, a Stargate basically has this like situation where the gods were actually aliens and they were aliens specifically that had these like strange powers because they were these little worms called gold that would burrow inside of uh, humans' uh, bodies and then take them over and they had special powers, right? Um, and, and, you know, one of the, the special uh, bad guys was Hathor, I think. Um, and uh, I actually quite like that. I, I really enjoy that. Um, but I, I really like this character because uh, she was Hispanic, if I remember correctly. Uh, she's from Colombia. And um, she had a very kind of Native American-looking uh, you know, vibe to her, although her name is pretty Spanish sounding, so that's kind of interesting, but um, I, I quite liked her a lot. I think it was interesting to have representation like that, and I think the um, the the main god avatar was from Turkey. His name was Salim, if I remember correctly, so that's pretty interesting, and the, they, they have this chamber, and they sit down and talk, and it was the most sham trial ever, um, I think because uh, the gods already were uh, against Khonshu to begin with, but also it seems like there was some sort of manipulation from behind the scenes due to uh, Harrow. And uh, I don't know, I, a lot of other TV talking shows that I've seen on YouTube didn't really pick up on this fact that Salim and Harrow were talking at the end of the, of the, of the episode. Um, but it basically looks like, you know, the trial was a sham trial. Like... It happened, but Harrow had already kind of uh, massaged the uh, the other avatars into picking his side over Khonshu because it seems like people disliked Khonshu to begin with. Um, because we, we learned that they lived in this overboid, over void place and um, that Khonshu is the only god that has decided to keep interfering with the earthly realm and uh, there's like friction due to that. I thought it was really interesting. I also really liked the visuals of that whole situation there. And it made me think about the King Chronicles. If you guys don't know, the King Chronicles are a secondary uh, set of stories told by uh, Rick Riordan, where he kind of gets rid of the Greek stuff and he focuses on the Egyptian. And you know, there's a little bit of overlap between the Egyptians and the Greeks uh, during the Ptolemaic period, if I remember correctly, where the Greeks took over uh, Greece, uh, Greece took over uh, Egypt for a while um, and then they kind of went away and then Egypt got taken over by Romans at some point if I remember correctly I think that's how that happened and I think the Ptolemaic period was this moment where you know there was mixing of gods and they created this different thing and so the King Chronicles kind of explored uh, the original Egyptian thing and then there's a crossover between the Egyptians and the Greeks in the uh, Son of Sobek no uh, novella, which is pretty interesting. And so, I, I I was looking at the stuff that they were looking that they were doing in Moon Knight, 
And I was like curious because if the Percy Jackson TV show that they're making, which has recently cast its main character, um, and it does well, eventually they'll want to do King Chronicles. And I'm curious to see if they're going to use a lot of the stuff that they did in Moon Knight as a basis for how the stuff in King Chronicles is going to look. Now, I know I'm thinking like 10 years from now, but I think it's an interesting uh, concept and an interesting kind of thing to look at. Um, so, I don't know. I, I always like look at new media through the lens of old media that I've consumed before. So it's kind of interesting to see how that kind of works. But um, the, the whole episode was pretty good. I actually really liked it. I think it also did very well in bringing, up, in bringing back the kind of mystery aspect of the personalities because there are moments where we see Mark and then Steven and then one of them blacks out and the other comes back but they didn't like the the person that blacked out didn't do the thing that the person that came back saw so uh there's the introduction of a third personality i think the proper terminology is alter i don't know anything about the id um so please apologize I, I you know I, I apologize for the um, possible uh, faux pas because I, I you know i just don't know anything about this stuff but it is very interesting that, you know, there was this kind of hint of this other uh, character. And then there's this other scene where Conchu turns back time, but he doesn't actually turn back time um, clearly because the people around them don't actually go back in time either. It just looks like the sky is turning back around time. And I, I saw people jump to the conclusion that this meant that they turned time backwards with Earth staying in the same time period, which doesn't make any sense. I don't think a god for the for Earth specifically, would have the power to change the whole universe. That just seemed kind of crazy. So what I'm guessing is that he changed the image of the sky around Earth, but that didn't actually change anything outside of the realm of Earth, right? So um, it's like Earth is, is like the circle in the middle, right? And then there's this other circle outside that is kind of like what the Earth sees from, you know, inside out. And Kanchu just changed how that circle looked and made it spin backwards. Uh, because he also didn't change from darkness to light a bunch of times. So he didn't actually change time. He just changed how the night sky looked. Because uh, they needed it to look how it did 2,000 years ago with Senfu. The, what's it called? The, the Magi or whatever. Did something because they, they were looking for a specific location. And they had, they, they had a star map. And so they had to um, change the stars to look how they did. 2000 years ago and so that that's why they they changed the um the the sky there so i think it was just like changing what was visible on the canvas instead of like changing everything around them right that, that, that's how i i thought about it and i think it makes more sense because i i, I mean sure Kanchu is a god but he is not a god of the universe he is a god of earth right so uh it makes sense that he would have the ability to change how earth it perceives things but not how the universe perceives earth if that makes sense so yeah um other than that i don't know i i really enjoyed the episode i really enjoyed the development of um layla's character uh the person that she started the episode with i'm guessing is her mom but honestly who the heck knows man like um the thing with with moon knight is that i don't know much about him uh, i have read a little bit about him uh in terms of like the new moon knight series but from what i understand this moon knight in the TV show is an amalgamation combination and then a reworking of a bunch of other iterations of Moon Knight. So even the people that know Moon Knight don't know what the heck's going on. And I think that that's really, really interesting. So um, I think they're doing really well. And uh, hopefully As Oscar Isaac decides to come back in some other TV shows and other movies because, you know, we're really delving into the supernatural and this aspect of, of, of this phase of Marvel. And it would be really interesting to see Moon Knight and Blade and the Black Knight and, you know, all of these other, you know, characters. Uh, maybe also Bloodstone as well. I don't know. It'd be kind of interesting to see uh, all of these characters show up. And, uh, yeah, well, other than that, I don't really have much to say about the episode. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe, and comment down below. Let me know what you thought. And thank you guys very much for watching. See you guys later.